In this video, we're going to be focusing on finding the equivalent resistance of four different circuits. We're going to start from a very simple series circuit, building our way up to a fairly complex combination circuit. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. The first one is a simple series circuit. Now for each one, you basically have to have some good foundation of what's happening with the electrons as they're flowing through the circuit. And for a series circuit, they just have one path where they just go around in the clockwise direction and they go through a three, two and five ohm resistor. So all you're gonna do is sum those three numbers up and then you have your answer, 10 ohms for your total resistance or equivalent resistance for that circuit. Moving on to the next one, now we have a parallel circuit to where the electrons now have multiple paths to loop around and get from high potential to low potential. Now, when you have a parallel circuit, you wanna add up the inverses of each of the resistors and that set that equal to the inverse of the total resistance. Now to solve for RT, you can take two different routes. You can add up the fractions manually by finding the lowest common denominator. So one over five, you would change that to three over 15. And then for one over three, change that to five over 15. Set that equal to one over RT. Sum those up, you have eight over 15. And then you're basically just gonna invert that fraction. Cause if you want RT, then you would cross multiply these two and then cross multiply these two and then you would get RT over one, which the one isn't really very significant, equals 15 over eight ohms. Now that's the first way. The second way is this. If you have fractions that are slightly more complicated or you just don't really wanna add fractions by hand, you can go ahead and just sum these two numbers up in your calculator. Now, if I do that, I get 0 0.53 repeating equals one over RT. Now, after I do that, I can just simply cross multiply these two numbers and then one over 0 0.53 gives me 1.875 ohms, which is the same exact number as 15 over eight ohms. So both methods are equally good. Um, I would say this one is definitely um, a little bit less work and equally as effective. So I would say either one, whatever your preference is, will find you that total resistance for that parallel circuit. Now, moving on to our last two combination circuits, I had to clear a little room so we can make sure we can break this circuit down properly to find the equivalent resistance. Now, we're gonna use the same skills that we used for those two previous circuits, but the first one was just a regular old series circuit. The other one was just a plain old parallel circuit. Now, this one has a little bit of both going on. It's got a series in this branch and a parallel in that branch. So what you wanna do is take your smallest little parallel chunk and collapse it down to look like a single resistor. So that parallel chunk is this five and three ohm resistor in green and blue over here. So if I take this little chunk out, then we can use the same method we used previously, one over five plus one over three equals one over RT. And then we already found the resistance of that a little bit earlier in that previous problem. And we found out that RT equals 15 over eight or 1.875. Now with that being said, we can go ahead and redraw the circuit. We have the two and three ohm resistor up top. And then now that chunk on the bottom looks like a 1.875 ohm resistor. So this is the two ohm resistor and then this was our three ohm resistor, which are gonna to combine to look like a five ohm resistor acting in a series when you combine these two. So that brings us to our next step. We have another parallel branch to sort of collapse down. So we have this little mini series that sums up to five, and now we have another parallel chunk. So one over five for the branch up top, plus one over 1.875 for the chunk below, equals one over RT. Now for this one, I'm definitely not gonna bother doing any uh, math by hand. I'm just gonna go ahead and put stuff into my calculator. I'm gonna sum these numbers up in my calculator and cross multiply it with the RT. So one divided by that sum is gonna give me an RT of 1.36 ohms as our total or equivalent resistance for that entire circuit. 
So anytime you're looking at a more complex or compound circuit with some series and parallel chunks in it, we're going to take our smallest parallel chunks and collapse them down to look like a single resistor, as we did with this green and blue resistor, working it down to this equivalent resistance of 1.875, redrawing it so we can get a good visual of what's going on. Um, with these two, we combine them as a five. So we basically are left with a single parallel circuit at the end. And then added up the inverses, did a little cross multiply, and then we ended up with 1.36 ohms for our final equivalent resistance. Now let's go ahead and look at our most difficult one, the last one. So let's go ahead and clear the screen one more time and get to this fourth problem. All right, now for the fourth one, the redraw is actually a little bit more complex. So you really have to kind of focus on um, which paths the electrons are gonna potentially take. So we have a path where they're gonna definitely all go through the two, so let's go ahead and start off with that. We know they're all going to go through the two. And then let's go ahead and see what happens next. Um, they can either take the option of going down this first branch and just going through the five and then back to the low potential end. So we have one path and I'll draw it up top. Doesn't matter if it's really in the top or bottom where it's going to go through the red five volt resistor. And then let's go ahead and check out the other options it has. Uh, the other option is it might go through this diagonal branch. In that case, it would go through the two and then the 20 and then eventually back around. OK, so I'm going to make sure there's a path that goes through the two and then through the 20. Now, before I draw that, I'm going to take a look at my next part. And then I also have a part that goes through a four and a 10 that also additionally has to go through that 20 as well. So that 20 has to be sort of a point where it merges and both of those would have to cross that 20. So let's go ahead and have a branch with a four and a 10. Um, our blue four ohm resistor is right here. And then our 10 ohm resistor is right there. And then we also have that diagonal portion over here, the green path, where it goes through the orange two ohm resistor. And then all of those would have to go through the gold resistor. So I'm going to go ahead and close up that parallel branch and then force them through the gold 20 ohm resistor. And then for this one, um, this one, this five ohm path over here, it looks like it didn't have to go through anything else. So it surpasses the 20. And then this is the high potential end. And then this is the low potential end. All right. So just like we did before, um, we are going to collapse down uh, some of these little parallel chunks. So we're going to take a look at our smallest parallel chunks and then work it down to our bigger ones. So this appears to be my smallest parallel chunk over here with the 4 and 10 up top and then the 2 on the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and combine that four and 10 because they're in a little mini series together. And then we're going to do one over 14 plus one over two because of the orange on the bottom equals one over RT. And then uh, I'm again, I'm going to sum these up, cross multiply it, do one divided by the sum that I just circled. And then the total resistance for that little chunk is 1.75 ohms. All right, so now we have this entire chunk that's 1.75 ohms collectively. And then now it looks like we have a bigger parallel chunk to take care of. So we have a 5 ohm branch up top. And then along the bottom, we have the 20 and the 1.75 combined. So the 20 and the 1.75 combined is 21.75 plus the 1 over 5 from the red in our top branch, and that equals 1 over RT. And again, I'm not interested in doing any um, adding by hand. I'm just going to sum these up, put it under the 1, and then my RT comes out to 4.07. All right, so now for our final total resistance, um, this isn't gonna be very hard because this entire blob of stuff, 
we worked on to a single 4.07 ohms in total. So it just needs to be combined with this two that's in a little mini series with it. So then two plus 4.07 equals 6.07 ohms. And that is our final equivalent resistance or total resistance. So the key to working out the more complex ones is you sort of have to track the path that are uh, the paths that the electrons are gonna take and then redraw something that accurately represents the paths that they're gonna take. So we did that over here and I feel like this looks a little bit more friendly to the eye where you can tell where each of the resistors are as far as which branch they're in or which parallel circuit they're a part of. We're gonna take our smallest parallel branches and collapse them together and then keep on collapsing them until we have basically a single series circuit where you can simply add those things together and get our final equivalent resistance. So I hope that was helpful to you in finding equivalent resistances that represent all different types of circuits. Thank you for watching and listening.